Today, you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Stellaris Dev Diary 288 has dropped. We've had an official announcement for the release date of Stellaris First Contact and a whole bunch of other stuff we're going to be diving into today. First off, I want to start straight away with that official release date. It will be coming out on March the 14th, Tuesday, March the 14th, meaning after today, Thursday, we have two more weeks of dev diaries next week and the week after and the following tuesday from that we will finally get our hands on this dlc it is quite a bit later than some of us hoped but it's still great to finally have that release date additionally we're going to be diving into the game director's rework of slingshot to the stars and a massive upgrade to quantum catapults we're going to be looking at the new independence day origin payback as well as what one of the possible benefits will be if we don't invade all these pre-FTL civilizations. Those are pre-FTL technological insights. So stick around for all of that and more, and without any further ado, let's dive in. Before we get into the dev diary itself, let's take a look at what the game director has been tweeting about in the last week. And I say that because we are getting even more information about 3.7 from the game director. So what have we found out now? Well, 3.7 will include a rework to Slingshot to the Stars, one of the origins that came in with Solaris Overlord, and Quantum Catapults in general. Quantic Ambush will be a new feature that gives a 33% fire rate bonus for 120 days or four months and Slingshot Empires increase this by an additional 17% to a 50% fire rate bonus as well. So the origin now comes with a bit of a rework. We still start with the ruined quantum catapult near our home system, but the game director has confirmed it no longer eats up the slot of one of our guaranteed habitable planets. That is a very interesting amendment. So no longer will we get a massive power reduction from only having one guaranteed habitable at the start of the game. We are still keeping the 75% influence cost reduction for new star bases and our quantum catapults as a slingshot to the star's empire have 50 percent more accuracy additionally the quantic ambush bonus when you actually use your quantum catapult and jump a fleet will be a whopping 50 percent increased fire rate meaning as a quantum catapult empire we could grab one of our fleets and slingshot it somewhere very very close by maybe even just to an adjacent system with 100 percent accuracy and get a whopping 50% fire rate bonus. This could be actually very powerful for year 30 wars in PvP and maybe mean Slingshot to the Stars is no longer a trash origin, possibly an origin we need to start respecting. As you can see here, the Quantum Catapult will be, if you take Slingshot to the Stars, much more accurate. We're jumping a reasonable distance here, a couple of systems away, and we are still able to hit with pinpoint accuracy one system directly adjacent to another. None of this does anything to uh, solve the underlying problem later on, and that is when you have multiple fleets, they won't all jump to the same location, they will jump to all sorts of different locations, meaning you cannot concentrate your strength with any ease. This, I hope, one day gets solved by allowing you to group up fleets to all use the Quantum Catapult at the same time so that they could all arrive in the same system, even with a degree of inaccuracy, but that would be a fleet-wide or a multi-fleet armada-wide, whatever you want to call it, inaccuracy, rather than actually uh, having each fleet arrive in a separate location. 
Whether or not this ends up being used in PvP, we will have to see in 3.7, but it's definitely going to make it more fun to use this in a single player game, and maybe in the late game means that Quantum Catapults are actually useful to get a quite a nice bonus, that nice 33% additional fire rate. Now I have already mentioned that Stellaris First Contact will be out very soon, March the 14th, Tuesday March the 14th. That is quite a bit later than a lot of us were hoping when they first announced it all the way back in January, but that's not what I'm here to talk about right now. What I'm going to talk about is some of the information that came out alongside that announcement. Alongside that announcement there was a sort of dev diary released on Tuesday of earlier this week. In there we got some interesting information we have not had so far about cloaking and I want to talk about that. So, the feature nobody saw coming. Not just for hiding observation posts, but we will now be able to equip our military and civilian ships with cloaking devices which will allow them to remain undetected even while traveling through closed or hostile space. So first off, we now know that for sure cloaking technology will enable our civilian and military ships to move through closed borders or hostile borders. This does not guarantee that we will not be stopped by a uh, uh, one of those fleet magnetizers, uh, the FTL inhibitors, preventing us from jumping further on, but we'll definitely be able to enter a system even if the enemy or the other empire, not necessarily our enemy, have closed their borders to us. We can then decloak to catch our foes unaware and unprepared or survey systems in secret. Be sure to keep your scanners up to date and powered in a galaxy full of possibilities, you never know what may be hidden in plain sight. So basically, cloak technology will have the counter technology to reveal it, and that will be upgrading your sensors, your scanners. It seems we won't be able to fire while cloaked, we will have to uncloak in order to shoot, so it's not quite entirely Star Trek, because in Star Trek you can shoot while cloaked, you just can't have your shields up while cloaked, but it's still going to present us with quite a few interesting tactical and strategic opportunities. Now let's look at the new Payback Origin. Nothing unites people more than a common enemy. You know how the story goes. Space invaders attack and the people of the world unite, casting aside their differences to stand together against a shared threat. Together, they defeat the more advanced enemy who foolishly underestimated the plucky underdogs. But what happens after the story ends? The former invaders are still out there, and they will not be fooled again. An awkward reunion is completely unavoidable. Cheerful Goth, one of the content designers on Stellaris, is here to tell us that this is the story that they wanted to tell with the new Payback Origin. This origin basically picks up at around the same time as Independence Day 2 Resurgence. It is the sibling of the Broken Shackles origin, another origin coming with Stellaris First Contact. That one is the pre-FTL multi-species origin, and it has another shared threat with that origin, a common threat, Minimar Specialized Industries. A megacorp that provides pre-FTL enlightenment for a price. Whilst Broken Shackles focuses more on reconnecting with your past, finding the other pre-FTL homeworlds that your multi-species empire has, Payback Empires seek only one thing in their future. Revenge. Let's first take a look then through this new origin and the effects it brings. First up we get a warning, this is a challenging origin. And yeah, and what we're about to read next definitely aligns with that view. You start with 10 fewer pops than normal. Yes, 10 fewer. Instead of 28, you will only get 18 pops. You'll also begin with several important technologies yet to be researched and with an infrastructural disadvantage. So less pops, less districts, less economic output, and less technology. We might not even start with the FTL technology enabled at the start of the game. That isn't quite listed here, but it is a definite possibility. You will also get a special archaeological site in your system 
the destroyed battleship of your former invaders. And that, I believe, is the MSI flagship that we got to see last week with all of the interesting features there. So having this archaeology site is going to mean you're getting minor artifacts, I assume, plus possibly a whole bunch of technologies as you uncover it. And at the end, maybe we're going to be able to put this battleship back into business and start using it as an offensive weapons platform. In that case, if we can do that, it may be like having the Grand Herald archaeology site, which gives you a titan at the end, but in this case we're going to get a battleship. Oh wow, though that could be quite nice. Then this origin will guarantee a number of pre-FTL civilizations throughout the galaxy, regardless of the pre-FTL civilizations and pre-sapient species slider settings. A random pre-FTL civilization will be uplifted to have the Broken Shackles origin. And an advanced empire with your ladder to the sky origin is spawned somewhere in the galaxy. So if you take this, you'll get Broken Shackles out there, you'll get all of the Broken Shackles pre-FTL worlds out there, and you'll get MSI specialized industries. But that isn't the only thing in this tooltip that we should pay attention to. If we jump down into the requirements, we'll also notice something spicy as well. And that is two of the new civic names, Eager Explorers and Privatized Exploration. I don't know exactly what these are going to do. It seems like we're going to find out about this next week, probably in the dev diary. Eager Explorers is the regular bio and Privatized Exploration is the Megacorp Civic. I'm guessing Privatized Exploration is going to boost our survey speed, possibly give us some sort of unique interaction with pre-FTL civilizations, and maybe we can spend energy credits or something like that on our science ships. Interesting. Eager Explorers, on the other hand, I assume again this is going to boost survey speed, but other than that, I'm really not sure exactly what it's going to do. If you have any thoughts and theories, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. We also get a new Casus Belli, that is the payback Casus Belli against specifically Minima Specialized Industries. You see, the entire goal of our nation with this origin, with this post-Independence Day origin, is to get payback against those darnable aliens. We're not going to sit around on Earth, we're going to take the battle out there into the galaxy. The exact way in which you want to achieve your revenge are entirely up to you. This is very much a story driven by the player. Will you choose to annihilate your enemy, turn your slavers into your own slaves, or battle them on the floor of the Galactic Senate, outlawing their very business model and their very way of life? even pacifist empires will have the means to obtain their vendetta without betraying their heartfelt ideals. I must admit though, if you end up as a pacifist after being invaded by aliens, that's a very interesting choice. And this event is an example of what happens when you believe that revenge does not have to be synonymous with violence. A war without weapons. Here is our new battlefield, the Senate floor. A war zone where conflicts are solved through vote casting and debate. That's an interesting idea. I'm sure the Space UN has lots of power, definitely. Here are our weapons, favors, ambassadors, the strength of our economy, and the purity of our vision. Here is our goal to ban enlightenment practices, preventing empires like the MSI from exploiting weaker civilizations. Here is where we win. Not with violence, but through the immutable power of the law. And then you have the choice to either pursue stopping direct interference or stopping all interference. Interestingly, I'm not entirely sure whether this will work because I'm pretty sure MSI could simply just flout galactic law and be in breach if they wanted to and they might actually choose to do that as an AI. We will have to see though. Cheerful Goth recommends you are not too hasty in your quest for revenge though. Rest, take your time to rebuild. The war against MSI left you with a devastated planet and the remnant of a battleship to be repurposed for your own needs. This battleship I do believe will be giving us a lot of technologies though, possibly even FTL technology early on, maybe, or maybe a lot of the technologies we're lacking will be gained through this archaeology site. 
I'm hoping it's not random. I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of story told through the salvaging of this battleship. Very much like the aftermath of Independence Day. Just saying. You will also want to go out and make new allies. Broken Shackles empires might be particularly inclined not only to help you, but to agree with your point of view. Remember, revenge is a dish best served cold. Don't wait too long though, because the Minima specialized industries surely won't leave you alone. And don't worry, they'll even send their used car salesman to try and get some cash out of you. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this transmission is. I believe it's not from MSI because that looks to be some sort of affiliate species. That's definitely not the MSI species. And they are saying, Dear Rock and Resistance, which I assume is the Payback Empire, they are contacting us on behalf of Minima Specialized Industries regarding our outstanding debt. They're happy to offer us a consultation free of charge and they want to settle the matter amicably as well as making sure that you repay the full amount you owe to MSI. You can choose to settle, refuse to pay and ask them who the heck they are. The galaxy is already filled with extra dimensional invaders, space dragons and all kinds of unimaginable horrors. With the Payback and Broken Shackles origins, the devs wanted to pit players against an enemy not so different from themselves. Minimar Specialized Industries starts as a developed empire with extra colonies and resources, but otherwise behaves like a normal empire with a well-defined personality. They will make their own alliances, join the galactic community, wage their wars, and might even fall before you can get your due. What will you do when even revenge is stolen from you? This text, I believe, is part of an event. Even before we reached the stars, we knew we were not alone. For centuries, the Minima specialized industries had loomed over us. First as a mentor, then as an oppressor, and now, finally, as a fallen tyrant. Now that MSI is gone, crushed by another claw. Our skies may be clear, but our people are still possessed by an insatiable need. Revenge. I believe this means that even if we don't get to kill MSI ourselves, we will still get the payback war goal and we might even be able to use it against other empires. We really might go down one of the darker paths available to a civilization. Many of Stellaris's narrative origins present a fixed story. So with Payback, the devs wanted to create a less linear narrative, providing players with multiple tools to accomplish their goal. Sometimes things don't go as planned, and the devs believe that's what will make this origin more interesting and replayable. They've given us an enemy. Now we only have to decide how we want to pay them back. And if you hate how much you're enjoying this video, then please take revenge on that like button. PDS Iggy returns to tell us about insights. Now, insights are what is going to hopefully, according to the devs, stop us wanting to completely squash and invade all pre-FTL civilizations that we find. A common issue that has been brought up in regards to this DLC is why shouldn't I just invade the pre-FTLs the moment I meet them? And Iggy is here to present a counter offer. What if we get unique technologies? Insight technologies are gained when you study pre-FTLs without making them aware of you. There are unique paths that these societies take, which our own civilization dismissed as a dead end. The road not traveled, you could say. This is all tracked through a situation which, once completed, will make a future observation event grant you a new insight. We can learn from anything and anyone now. So as you see here, we can collect insights, favor insights, or favor the mission. Once our science drones do their job, this is for a, uh, I believe this is for a hive mind, we will end up with a new insight technology. We'll find out a little bit more about those in just a moment. But if you have not completed the situation when you get an observation event, instead you gain even faster progress to the next insight. 
I believe this is basically telling us that we are almost certainly going to be getting quite a few more observation events from our pre-FTL civilizations that we have under observation. That's something we basically are expecting, but it's still exciting to hear. We're going to be getting a lot more flavor from all of these pre-FTL civilizations. Here we can see one of these events, Requiem for a Drone, where I'm assuming this is a reference to Requiem for a Dream, but then reading through the text, I'm not... I'm not entirely sure that it actually is. But basically here we're going to get progress towards the next insight technology and society research gained up front. And finally, when you're about to receive a fantastic breakthrough, here we have an insight breakthrough imminent. We have gathered enough information to create a new insight technology to explore further. The next time we have an observation event that would advance our insight, we will gain a new research option. So there are multiple insights available. This actually means that with this new patch, patch 3.7, if we include the Archeo technologies and these new technologies, we're probably getting somewhere in the region of 20 plus new technologies, which I think is the most, no the greatest number of new technologies we've had added to this game in, I, I don't even know how long actually. It's, it's, it's really awesome, wow. But what are these new technologies, these new insights, I hear you asking? Well, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, Iggy is actually sharing some of them with us. We're going to get to see at least four with the title of a fifth shown off quite beautifully. First up, we have new physics technologies. Atmospheric orbital mechanics gives us plus 0.25 available envoys. You'll see this as a theme throughout all of these different technologies. They are going to give us some incremental amount of extra envoys that we can use in our interactions with pre-FTL civilizations, amongst other things. This is in part down to the fact that the devs believe we need more envoys and more ways of getting them now more than ever with first contact. Additionally, this is going to give us plus 5% resources from orbital stations and minus 50% station upkeep. I assume that basically means we get 5% extra minerals, 5% extra energy, and 5% extra basically anything. So it was a research orbital station, all of that. The reduction in station upkeep of minus 50% is nice. That will half our energy usage on orbital mining as well as research stations. But overall, I don't think this technology would be as good as grabbing 10 pops at year 20 or 30. So maybe we'll, we'll just have to see what other techs there are here. You will see just below as well, I should mention this, trinary computing. That technology does not tell us what it does yet. We haven't got to see, though I'm assuming it gives us some sort of research bonus. Next, we get a really wacky one. We're in the society tree now. We have satisfying insults. Get half an envoy plus 50% insult efficiency. I assume that means when we insult somebody, it will give them an extra 50% negative relations modifier. And every five years, you can gain a benefit for insulting another empire. That sounds, yeah, that sounds really weird. I'm, I'm definitely here for it. It's a fun technology. I don't think it's going to have very much impact on a multiplayer game, but in single player, I think it might be quite thematic and interesting, and I'm keen to see what these specific benefits are. Below that, we have predatory tactics, plus half an envoy, and minus 50% sublight speed loss from cloaking. Okay, let's unpack that because that's quite a wild little insight to hear about. First off, this tells us whilst our ships are cloaked, they're going to be getting a massive sublight speed reduction. In this case, I assume that reduction is going to mean that regular ships are able to run away from you very, very quickly. So you cannot cloak and then uh, catch up with an enemy. You'll have to cloak and try to slowly sneak past. Don't forget though, star bases never move, so a sublight speed reduction in order to creep up on a star base with torpedo weapons shouldn't be too difficult at all. And then secondly, perhaps, we do need to think about the idea that maybe when we decloak, we're going to get a whole bunch of negatives that are quite unpleasant. Maybe we continue to have a sublight speed reduction for some time. Maybe we get a ship fire rate or weapons damage reduction. I'm not entirely sure, but I can see that happening in an attempt to balance out these cloaked ships. 
Last but by no means least, we have Lost Building Methods. This is a new engineering technology that gives us a whopping minus 30% district cost, as well as minus 30% empire size from districts and 0.25 envoys. That additional reduction in empire size is kind of alright, not fantastic, but reduced district cost, especially if we can get this relatively early on, it is going to cost us 6,000 tech points, so I believe it is a level 2 technology, but that should mean we might be able to get it around, uh, around year 20 to 40, somewhere in that range. Minus 30% could be quite useful. Not as useful as right at the start of the game, but still definitely quite useful if we're trying to shift our economy away from using minerals and use those minerals instead for getting lots and lots of alloys, maybe consumer goods, something like that. Are these new technologies going to be spicy enough to convince players not to invade the planet? Sometimes, maybe, I think is my answer here. Now, we haven't seen all of the new benefits that the rework to pre-FTL civilizations will bring. I can only assume when we weigh it all up, it's going to seem even better than we're currently seeing it at. However, I think from a PvP perspective, if you find a pre-FTL civilization, let's say it's year 10 or 20 or something like that, you're probably going to want to invade and take those juicy pops even with these extra bonuses maybe if the game is more focused on um if it's more focused on diplomacy like the recent stellaris entropy gpo event maybe the extra envoys will definitely be very useful and spicy but most of the time i, I really can't see it being better especially early on not to just invade the planet even with all of this rework if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to find out more about Stellaris First Contact, specifically the rework to pre-FTL civilizations, then click the video on screen now.